All right, you guys, just showed um, a little bit of video of skinning the deer. Now we're gonna talk about processing the deer, breaking it down, taking the actual meat off of the carcass. So um, just to start out, anywhere you had hair, you're gonna wanna remove those parts. Uh, maybe some of the um, uh, meat, maybe a little bit dirty, you wanna clean that up so we're not doing double work. So once you remove um, the meat, you basically want to be able to cut it up, clean it up, and use it for whatever portions. So, uh, I always like to start. Alright, so now we're going to clean up some of this meat before we remove it off of the carcass. Get it kind of prepped. I'm starting out with the tenderloins, which obviously is, uh, would be your filet mignon and your cow. Uh, it's going to be the most tender piece of meat. Sometimes people forget about this piece of meat when they're cleaning it, but this is one you want to make sure you do not forget. Delicious piece of meat. And once again, it's easier to clean this now instead of after the fact. Uh, we've got a small protective layer in here. It's kind of a tough angle to show you guys from the video, but you can see this piece of meat just kind of Falls right out. It comes all the way down to about the mid uh, torso. And you're left with the tenderloin right there. So we're going to set that aside right back here. And you have two of those, one on each side. So you can see I have. Another thing is, another reason I keep the head and the cape on is because that gravity holds this carcass, gives it some weight so it's not going to spin around. Um, if you had a hoist or a crank, you know, it would be a little easier, but just using the ladder keeps this deer from flopping around and it's easier to, um, easier to work with. I feel it is, at least just to, you know, do this some experience. So, you've got smooth, two small tenderloins. Uh, the next thing I like to do, spin the deer around. I like to do the uh, back straps. Um, so basically you're going to want to find Backbone comes straight across to the spine. And you're basically going to run right down that spine. And when it comes to knives, you want to use what you feel comfortable with. But um, like I said, I prefer a four inch or six inch blade. Um, small buck knife anywhere, but so if you cut this loin out, get it started. Use gravity as your friend. You can see where the loin comes out to, and basically. work this
show you guys a good look. It just comes right down past the shoulder. Right to the neck bone. So you have a nice back strap. One of those. Every deer is different size, but they should all be around 20, 20 plus inches if you get the the whole thing. So always start by cutting down that where the the loin meets the, the ham. Work this one down to Two loins, two tenders. Uh, you should just see rib bone and spine. That's kind of how you want to leave it. Maybe a little meat here or there. Uh, not being too picky with this deer right now. Uh, knock it down late season just for basically some some jerky. Um, so there's a couple pieces of meat we can use. Uh, I always keep these. Belly flaps, I can grind them or make some jerky with them. And throw those in a bag because they're not that useful of a piece of meat. Um, yeah, every piece of meat is useful, I should say, but not as versatile as the others. Some people like to cut off a lot of the uh, good meat. Go right down and take off the shoulder, and I'll actually um, so we basically just quarter that, um, and I like to uh, cut that off and now uh, make jerky out of that. So stack one there, and I'm gonna turn around and do the same thing on the other side. If you take that. Rim me, just follow it right on down behind the shoulder. Come out. You're really not cutting off anything of value right here. It's actually just skin and tendon to hold it together. It's this little spot, so I'm gonna have to cut around where I dragged that deer out of the woods. Um, kind of roughed it up, got down to the bone. So two shoulders there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up these legs. Actually, before we do that, uh, let's get some of the neck meat. Use the neck meat. And this is just going to follow that spinal 
got all the way down to this neck vertebrae. And this meat just kind of peels right off the side. Don't be afraid to hit bone either. So make sure I cut around that while the salvage looks good. And now we're gonna do the hands. Um, so you gotta cut around this H bone, and then also you gotta make sure that um, any area that's had um, any type of defecation or if you busted any liver or guts and drained out of the anus area um, you're going to want to avoid that uh, clean it up best you can and uh, you know that's kind of the bottom line and any meat that's got hair on it um, you're obviously going to clean up as well I'm going to change knives here This is another thing too. You could take this whole um, hind quarter off and process it like I'm going to do the front shoulders, but I prefer to let uh, gravity take its course and cut the meat off because it, it just comes off so easy and you can kind of portion it out. Um, not the true way to debone anything, but it's the best way. Always leave that shank meat there because you do not want to cut that tenant. If you cut that tenant while you're holding it, it's going to create another mess and possibly uh, do some harm. So we're going to let gravity keep this piece of meat balanced while we cut into the hands and um, you're going to see me break it down and portion it. So that's like your ham portion. And I 
just like this six inch blade because it's a little um, larger to run the bone. Also, I'll show you guys what knives that I have and that I'm using um, to clean this deer up. And you know what? Everyone's got their own way of doing things. And not saying my way is right, but I will tell you this. When you clean a deer, I'm going to uh, cut the meat off and it's not showing bone. Like that, you're losing out. So that's the goal, to get the maximum yield possible. Any way you get to that outcome is okay with me. Once again, just don't cut that. Achilles tenant. We go right down this side just like we did with the other one. Eight over here. I'm going to swing it around so you guys can see. I'll cut around the. Let's get out of here. I'm just grab it. Basically, we have a carcass, so we can cut the ribs down, boil the meat off, but she doesn't have much when it comes to that. Um, you know what? I think we've got this deer cleaned up. What I'll do is I will uh, cut around the shank portion, but in order to do that, Going to take her off the table. We're going to work right off. We'll lower this camera down. Now we can go in and cut that tenant and try to avoid the entire process. Cut that into here. Not much on these shanks. Try 
trying to get everything. Can't leave. So, here we go guys, we've got this over here broken down, and uh, it didn't take too long, but we were able to get a um, pretty good yield of meat out of here, so let's take a quick look at some of the stuff we've got. Um, so over here... Um, we have my tenderloins and my back straps. And over here we have, um, these are the two um, shoulders, which we'll clean those up. And then here we have all the ham, um, ham meat, which is going to make for some uh, good roast. And I'm going to bag all that up. And then here we got some of the uh, the belly fat and the shank meat and a little bit of neck meat. So uh, the non-purposeful purpose uh, full cuts, but still cuts that will yield um, some good meat. Um, some of the tools we used today was, of course, we had a Gabriel, we had a ladder, and we had a small um, strap. Of course, a bucket for the carcass. A couple of the blades that we used, um, I used um, an old timer, um, which is actually a, a skin and knife, uh, about a four inch blade uh, with the skin and hook, which I didn't have much of an opportunity to show you guys about that. I do have another skinning blade that I, I didn't use here, um, which is good for more or less for pelting though. It's a little more for delicate cuts. Um, have a couple buck knives that I was, you know, planning on maybe showing you guys some cuts, but I ended up using a um, small uh, four-inch um, boning knife, um, which actually did most of my work. And then I finished off with a six-inch um, fillet knife. And uh, you know what? To each its own. But uh, that's my process, and um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, uh, that's kind of how I break down a deer and um, using household tools. Next time I actually show you the process that we normally use, which has, um, you know, my uh, hoist and everything. And it actually makes things um, much, much easier, which I guess I've been spoiled uh, dealing with that as of uh, the past few years. But, um, you know, stay tuned for the next episode, you guys. And, um I'll keep uh, giving you guys content. Jojo, my friend, 301. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I um, appreciate you guys tuning in. And always, um, your thoughts and, uh, you know, criticism. That way uh, we can keep going back and forth. Thanks.